Hi, it's Geraldine here from Geraldine's Academy. We've had some ladies who were interested in looking in more detail as to what you can do on your 500E. So I'm just going to run through the settings on the screen so that you can maybe become more familiar with it. So firstly when you turn it on your home screen comes up and you have a home screen button here which will always take you back home. As I always say in class, where do you go when you get stuck? You go home. So this is our edit screen with the grid. This is obviously our lettering screen with the ABC and this is our design screen. So if we choose the design screen, let me just get out of there for a sec. Let's go back to the beginning. So it opens up all these different folders of different designs. Now you have your arrows here to turn the page. So you've got petite designs, favorite designs, border designs, geometric designs. When I turn the page, pantry, word style, alphabet, quilting designs, then some bracelet designs and some calibration patterns and these are really just used to calibrate if you um, pop your hoop on and it doesn't always align to the center position these help you do the alignment for the calibration so if you want to go and have a look at the designs and to see which one you might like to use you just choose a design folder and it will display the designs in that folder. If you decide you want to look at something else you can X out, sorry, click on the flower and go back to where you were. So you might like to go in and look at the alphabet. Back to the flower takes you back to the page, petite designs and so on. You need to learn to read this screen because it says here there's one of three pages. So you need to turn to look at the next page to see what other designs are there. And it always gives you the information to telling you what hoop to select. Okay, so you can't choose a big design and put it in a small hoop. Down the side here now you have um, the home screen and then you have a folder. So when you click on the folder it shows up. So if you have a USB stick in here with a design you can go to the USB stick to open the design. If you save a design to your machine you can go to the machine tab and open a design that way. The next key is the set menu and this is important to be able to go in here and look at the settings to decide what you want. So the first page is common settings so it's to do with the machine with the colors so if you find your screen is not bright enough you can brighten it up if you want it a bit darker you can darken it. You can choose a different colorway here if you prefer to have things in a different color. Your volume is the loudness of the beeps every time you touch the screen it will beep and you can turn that up or down. Next you have inches or millimeters so depending on which one you prefer to use you could select. Now to select you just touch it so now it's on inches and now it's on millimeters. Now at some point we have to say OK but if you want to make 10 changes you can make your 10 changes and then say OK at the end. So this is page 1 of 4. On the next page we have screen calibration. <coughs> now this one if you were touching buttons on your screen and you weren't selecting what you were touching you might need to calibrate your screen. When you go in here it will come up with some X's that you touch to make sure the screen is calibrated. Not something you should need to do on a regular basis. You can format a USB stick in here if you find you're sending designs and 
the stick is not recognising the design. There could be two reasons. You may need to format the stick or your stick might be too big. Smaller is um, better than larger in this case. Your standby timer. Now this is set for 10 minutes. You can make it more, you can make it less. But this just puts the machine to sleep if you don't touch the screen for 10 minutes. Next you have the upper thread sensor. This should be off so that if the thread broke on the top it will stop stitching until you've had a thread break. Your sewing light should be on. You can turn it off but why you would I don't know. And quiet mode is off. Now all quiet mode does is set the machine at a speed of 400 stitches a minute. Um, it's not really quieter but there you go. Um, clean bobbin message. So this message usually comes up about every 15 hours to remind you it's time to take your bobbin case out and give your machine a clean. The background colour, so at the moment this background colour is white. I could change it to a bit of a duller, kind of a very pale blue or a yellow colour. I'm going to just leave it to white. And then reset all defaults. So if you've gone in and changed some settings and you want to put everything back to normal, you can just reset all your defaults. So that's that page. Then we go into the little icon with the sewing machine and the embroidery hoop. And this has all the information that we need to understand about stitching. So the tension, now the tension is on auto and generally you just leave it on auto and the machine will adjust itself. The remaining bobbin thread now the default setting for this is at this little dot at 2 but sometimes we like to just take it back so we can get a bit more mileage out of the bobbin. The maximum speed, so this machine is set to 700. You can take it all the way up to 860 um, or you can take it all the way down to 400. and that is entirely up to you where you set your speed. Generally if you're using metallic thread or doing lace you would sew at a slower speed. One stitch stop here is off. Now this is this can be turned on and off at any time and again it's personal choice. If you um, are doing a quilting design for example where you want to bring your bobbin thread to the top you may turn this on, the machine will go to the start position, do one stitch, stop so you can pull the bobbin thread up and then you go again. But it can get annoying in normal embroidery if it's on all the time. Your colour consecutive grouping should be on so that if you're doing a design with the same colours you can group those colours together so the machine sews all the same colour at the same time. The next page, hoop confirmation is on. This is a reminder that comes up to tell you what hoop is required for the design and it's up to you then to double check you have the correct hoop selected. And hoop calibration, again this is a calibration option so that if your hoop is not lining up in the centre position at the start you can make some adjustments. Thread cutting should be on. Now this machine has been set to 3mm and what this does is if there's a jump that is more than 3mm the machine will cut the thread and move to the next position. This is normally probably um, at a higher position. Now you can change it if you want to but that will just mean you'll have to go in with your scissors and cut the jump threads. Cut at colour change or end of design. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. There's a colour change and it's going to go to another colour and you re-thread. You want it to cut at the end of that colour. And the cutting command is on. Now this is to do 
with designs that are digitized that have a cut command in the design. So this should be on so the machine can read those designs and do the cut where required. Thread selection. So you can choose any of these brands of threads um, but be aware sometimes the Australian colour um, numbers for some of the brands are different particularly I think with the um, the Mettler Polysheen and some of the Robinson Anton numbers are different. Um, I tend to just leave it at the Janome setting and if it says red then I choose a red that I like to choose. But you can change this to whatever you desire. The last one is the grid line. Grid line is on. This is going to display the same size grid that comes with your template for your hoop and the size of this grid is 10 mil so that you can use that as a guide for placing a design in your hoop. Then resume mode is on and this can be a very handy feature so if you were sewing um, and you were in the middle of a design and you had to leave to go out to do something you can turn the machine off when you turn it back on it will ask you do you want to resume and it will take you back to the same place you finished so that's all of those settings the next setting is a flag and this will just give you the same information in different languages if you choose and um, that's all there is in here in these settings so I'm going to say OK so that any changes I did make take effect. If I just X out, nothing will have changed. So I'm going to say OK. Now the next option on the side here is the question mark. And if we go here, it shows you information about how to wind a bobbin, replace the needle, thread the machine and inserting the bobbin. So if you click on the little book it just shows you pictures and you scroll through the pictures to show you how to wind your bobbin. X out of there. And then the last one is the key which is the lock and this will lock the machine so that you can't accidentally press the start button if you're changing the needle or if you're threading the machine. It's a built-in safety feature. I suggest you get used to it and use it um, in the safety of all our fingers. When you're done with the lock and with threading, you can click the lock again to turn it off. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics of all of these settings. The lettering comes up and it shows us um, ABCs, um, different fonts. There's five pages here, so it goes from alphabet to numbers um, to percentages and different um, lettering options we can choose. Down the bottom here on this page, there's a small square box and then there's a, a skinnier box and these are just spaces. So if you want to write a name and have a space, you would choose one of these boxes to put the space. On the top here you have the lettering tab and you can choose different fonts. So you have a Gothic script, Cheltenham and down here it says page one of two so as I turn the page there's more options to choose from. And you will just choose the one you like. I'm going to choose Cheltenham. On the next screen is the orientation for the lettering. So the top row here, AB, is going to go straight across and if I touch it again, now it will go on the, on the vertical and the first one is horizontal. The next option is SLM, which is, or SML, small, medium and large. So depending on what size font you want, you can choose the size by selecting it until the letter comes up to represent the size. The next one is capitals or lowercase. 
So you might want to start a name in a capital and then use lowercase or you might want to do them all in capital. So this just switches between uppercase and lowercase. And then the folder, so if you've created a label or something that you spent a bit of time on, you can then save it in a folder. So if I was to type ABC and then I wanted a space, I could do D, E and F. And when I say OK, it tells me that the carriage is going to move and OK. Now if I go to my home screen and then go to edit, you can see it's all the way to the left. You can then move it into position. So you could pick it up and take it with your stylist or you can just use the arrows here to move it. Now once you're in here and you have lettering, this becomes available. Now this is not available if there's no lettering, it will be greyed out. So when we select this, now you have some options. So we could bend the lettering a little, either down or back the other way. And then sometimes when you bend them they become too close together so this one spreads them further apart and the other one brings them closer together. Okay, so you can have fun playing with your lettering, setting up a label, you could have a design and have the words going all the way around if you wanted. So once you're done then you say OK to apply those settings. Um, we could change the colour of the lettering if we wanted. Black doesn't always look delightful. So on that colour rainbow tab, it brings in a wheel here so you could choose a different colour. And then down here you have this slidey bar. So I've picked blue, but if you wanted a darker blue, you can just slide the dial along to choose the colour you like. Once you're done, you say OK. And then OK again and then it's warning us that the hoop is going to move into position and you can say OK. And then you need to learn to read this screen because now it says ready to sew. It tells us what hoop to have. It gives us the design size, the speed, how many colours and how long the design is going to take to stitch out. Down here it gives us the number of stitches and it shows colour one because there's only one colour. If there was more colours here then other colours would show up here. And then this stitch count as it starts to sew zero over here will change as it goes through the design. So that's pretty much it in the lettering tab. If we're done we can go home, we can go back into the edit screen get rid of it. It says unsaved designs will be erased and I say OK and now I'm back to the home screen. If I wanted to bring in a design, let's say the ballerina, you just simply click on it. You can add your ballerina and some lettering simply by going home, going to edit and this is in the 140 hoop. So the first thing I would do would be change the hoop size and go to a bigger hoop so now you have more space to do things. And as you scroll through here on your edit screen you can enlarge the design by 20%. Now the reason it's 20% is it doesn't affect how the design stitches so you can go 20 up or 20 down and that's it. So if you wanted her there, she's enlarged. If we were to put her over here and copy, it's actually put another one on top. And if I go to my mirror image, I can then walk her across and have two ballerinas. And then if you wanted to put someone's name in, of course you can go back to the home screen and go into the lettering and add that too. 
So these buttons here are again pretty much self-explanatory. Now if I was to say OK to this design and it comes up then ready to sew, tells me what who, and I say OK, it's telling me now there's 10 colours because it sees each of the ballerinas as one design. So it's going to do all of one ballerina and then all of the other. This uh, little flower here shows me what it's going to stitch first. So it's going to stitch the dress on the left hand ballerina and when it's finished doing all of her it will do the other one. So to make this an easier process if we go back home and go to edit the last thing you do before you start to sew is go to the spools of thread and when I go here it brings up the picture and all I do is say OK and then OK again and now I have five colours instead of ten so it will do her dress then it will do her dress then it will do her face and then her face so if I go in here you'll see there's two dresses the second colour is obviously their leg warmers and things the next is the bottom of their dresses and then their hair so it will do both at the same time now if at some point then you've got this far and you say I don't really want the two ballerinas I've changed my mind I've done something else when you go back to edit it ungroups them and now if I was to say OK now it's gone back to 10 colours so that must be the last thing you do if you want to sew them both out colour wise at the same time so that's it from me for now I hope you have fun with it and I look forward to seeing you again in another video bye for now